Hi everybody. Welcome to an introduction to significant figures. In this video, I hope to show you what significant figures are, what they're used for, and what are some rules for using them. So, the first question is, what is a significant figure? And the best way to answer that is through a question. So, I'm going to throw something out there. How many liters of water are there in the Atlantic Ocean? Take a guess. Okay, I'm sure somebody has actually measured them. Um, I looked it up in Wikipedia, and according to Wikipedia, there are 3.547 times 10 to the 20th liters of water in the Atlantic Ocean. Do you think somebody actually measured that? I'm not sure. Um, do you think that is the exact amount of water that's in the Atlantic Ocean? I know for a fact it's not. So the question is, what, which of those numbers, the 3, the 5, 4, the 7, or any of those zeros, did they know for sure? And which ones were they guessing at? And where we're going to start our conversation is that we're going to have to be able to send a code. And significant figures are a way to send a code to your reader that lets them know, I knew these numbers and I sort of guessed here. Okay, so significant figures will be all the digits in the number that you know for sure and your one estimate. Because remember, in a, good, in a good measurement, you're going to write down all the numbers you know for sure and one estimate. So significant figures will list all of those. Um, the more significant figures you give in a number, the more you're sending a message to your reader that this number is precise. The measurements I did were accurate and precise. You can say for certain that a number between 1 and 9 is a significant figure because it was part of your guess or part of your known numbers. If a number is a 0, well, we're going to need to deal with that. So I'll start you off with some simple measurements that only deal with numbers from 1 to 9. So we're going to measure some the lengths of some objects here. Um, so here's this box, and I know for sure it's greater than 3, and I'm going to guess that it's about 3.7. So I knew the 3, I'm, I'm estimating the 7, so I have two significant figures, 3 and the 7. They're both numbers 1 to 9, they're both significant. In this number, I know that the length of this object is between 0.4 and 0.5, so I'm sure it's 0.4 something. So this zero that occurs over here is a decoration zero. It's not significant. The four I know for sure, and I'm going to guess 0.45, because it looks like it's right in the middle. So that's 0.45. The four and the five are significant figures. My what I knew for sure and my one guess. Now this scale is more precise than the runs before, and we're going to get more decimal places in our number. So here, I know for sure that it's greater than 0 0.6, 61, 2, 3, 4, 0 0.65, 0 0.66, and it looks to me it's about 0.63. So I have a decoration 0 in the front, and then I have a 6, a 6, and a 3, all of which are significant figures. Three significant figures, because my scale was more precise. So, what about those zeros? I carefully avoided numbers that, didn't, that had zeros in them. Now we're going to get into them. The thing you have to remember is that this is not a math class, and that numbers come from measurements, and then they include error. And so those zeros are going to be a clue as to what is an error, what's a guess, an estimate, and what is part of precision. I'm going to give you some rules for dealing with those. Um, and they're going to surround whether you know something for sure, whether you're guessing at it, or whether that zero is there to be a placeholder. A placeholder zero just changes the size of a number. So it changes a 1 into a 10, or it changes a 1 into a 0 0.01, a uh, one hundredth. Okay. Then I'm going to show you a method where if you're not the one measuring, if all you get to do is see the answer, how do you know where the person estimated? And I'm going to give you that. It's called the underline and dot method. So is the zero there for precision? Let's take a couple examples here. So here's a box, and it's on a being measured by a kind of a crappy scale that just says this is zero and this is 10 centimeters. So good measuring, you would make um, imaginary division. So I'm going to say this is halfway. So this would be about five and halfway again would be about two and a half, about there. Um, here would be about two. 
So that box looks to be about half of where my cursor is. So I'm going to say that that box is one centimeter long. I'm estimating that number. So I have one significant figure. It's my estimate. Now, I'm going to give you the same exact box. But this time I'm going to lay it on a better ruler. And this time I know for sure that it's around one. I'm not guessing there. that The scale clearly says one. So let me imaginary for a second. Let's just lengthen the box to about right here. And I would say if, if the box were as long as where my cursor is, that would be 1.1 centimeters. So this scale is capable of giving you a decimal place. Now it just so happens that the box lands on a tick mark. So it's 1.0. Now that zero is there for a reason. It's there to tell you that you are estimating that point zero. It could have been 1.1, but it's 1.0. Now, go to math class for a second. What's the difference between 1 and 1.0? A math teacher is going to tell you that there's no difference between the two. But as a chem teacher, I'm telling you that a 1 tells you that that 1 is a guess. It's an estimate. But a 1.0, you're relatively certain that the box is 1 centimeter long and it's probably 1.0. So that zero at the end there is there for precision. It doesn't change the size of it. It changes how accurate or how precise you want that number to be. Take another example. Here's this black box. So here we have zero to 0.1. So this is 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04. Now again, let's say I want to measure where my cursor is. I would say that's 0 0.041. Now the, the zero in the very beginning, the zero is a decoration. The point zero is a placeholder because I have to make this number smaller than point one. So the point zero four one, I only have two significant figures, the four and my guess, my one. So if the box actually hits right here at this tick mark, I'm gonna say point zero four zero, but the last zero is there for precision and so it is significant. Okay, so I have two significant figures, the four and the zero after it. Let's take another one. So this one, here's 900, 9, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and let's say it's 979. 979 would be three significant figures. Okay, 9, 7, and 9, all between 1 and 9. Um, but what if I shift over and say, well, that fuzzy region kind of looks like it's 980. If I just told my friend, okay, it's 980, how would my friend know if that last zero was my guess, because I'm guessing is it 979 or 980, or is it just a placeholder that's making that 98 into a 980? So in this case, it's a special case, you would actually put a decimal place right after the zero. So you'd write 980 point. And what that does is it sends a signal to the reader that that last zero there is actually a, a, an estimate. It's a significant figure and it's an important part of this number. It's not just a placeholder. So summarize. The first box that we measured was about one. So that's significant, it's a one number, it's between one and nine. 1 1.0 is no bigger than one. So this trailing zero back here is there for precision. So therefore, it is a significant figure. What's the difference between 1.2 and 1.20? Not a size difference, it's a precision difference. So that zero is actually there for uh, a significant figure. It's there for precision. Switch over here, 0 0.04, this is a decoration zero, this zero is a placeholder zero because it's just making that four smaller than 0.1, okay? The measurement that we actually did, the 0 0.040, we've got a decoration, a placeholder, and then a precision zero because this last zero is not changing the size of the number. It's telling you that this person took extra time or used better equipment and got a better number. Same thing is true with the last number, decoration, um, placeholder, and accuracy zero or precision zero. So here we have three significant figures. The underline and dot method. 
If all you get to see is the answer, how are you going to know which ones are significant? So what I'm going to have you do is take a number and underline every number from the farthest left to the farthest right that is between 1 and 9. Okay, so let's take an example. I've got 107,500 here. So I'll start at the left and go all the way to the right, underlining all the, the non-zero digits. Now, I happen to underline a zero here, but that's okay. Okay, as long as it's a sandwich zero, a zero that's sandwiched in between non-zero digits, that's fine. I also wrote down a second number that's 107.500. And in step one, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to underline the one, the zero, the seven, the five, because you have to underline all your non-zero numbers. Okay. Step two, if there's a decimal place, a dot, then I want you to continue your underline to include any of the trailing zeros at the end of the number. Okay, so our 107,500, well, there's no decimal place. So none of the zeros at the end count because they are placeholder zeros. They're there to change that 1,075 into 107,500. However, the 107.500, those trailing zeros are there for a reason. And it's not to change the size because 107.5 is the same size as 107.500. So those last zeros are there for precision. And that means they are significant. This number has six significant figures where the 107,500 only has four significant figures. Okay, remember, significant figures tell you all the numbers you know for sure and your one guess. We have to practice, okay? So I want you to take these um, 10 numbers from A to J and tell me how many of them, how many significant figures are in each of the following numbers. Pause the video for a second, scribble down some answers, think through it. The answers. Well, A, B, and C all contain numbers that are only 1 through 9. So A, B, and C have 1, 2, and 3 significant figures, respectively. D and E both include what I call sandwich zeros, zeros sandwiched between non-zero digits. Well, they would be underlined in the first step of the underline and dot method. So there are four significant figures in D and E. F has a placeholder zero because we're trying to make that 10 or that out of a 1 and a 0. So we need that 0 to push the 1 into the 10's place. So only the 1 counts as a significant figure. The same thing is true of 100 um, because the two trailing zeros are placeholder zeros that are making the 1 larger. They're making it into 100. 10.0 though, you would think, well, doesn't that only have one significant figure? But the trailing 0, the point zero here, it's not there to change the size, so it must be there to change the precision of your answer. So that one has three significant figures because you have a precision zero, a sandwich zero, sandwiched between a non-zero digit and something that's there as your estimate. Um, I has a whole bunch of um, placeholder zeros followed by a guess, an estimate. So there's only one significant figure here. However, 0 0.00340, um, the two beginning zeros are placeholder zeros. They don't count as significant figures, but the three and the four are non-zero. They count, and this trailing zero here is there not to change the size, but to show that the person took extra time being more precise. Significant figures. What are they? They are all the numbers you know for sure and your one estimate. They are all the numbers from one to nine and maybe a zero. What are they used for? They send a code, they send a message to your reader that tells them how good your answer is, what, what precision is that answer at? And what are the rules? I would say the best rule to use is an underline and dot method. But, Significant figures are not the only way to send these codes, and they're not even the best way. So why are we using them? There are lots of methods you may learn in further chemistry courses or maybe even in college to tell people how much error you actually think is in your answer. Why we're using them? They're simple, 
they're pretty straightforward and they're easy to use. So we're gonna force the system on you so that you get used to telling people this is what I know and this is where my estimate is. It's not the best way, but it's quick, it's dirty, and it serves our purpose. So let's take an example here. Um, I've got a box, this blue box, that I want you to measure using that scale. And when you measure it properly, writing down all the numbers you know for sure and your one guess, I think you're going to find out that you have a problem when you record that number using significant figures. How are you going to solve that problem? Again, significant figures are not the best way to deal with all these problems, but they are what we're going to use, and so we need to deal with the problems that come up. Take this example, write some comments in the space below, and let's get a conversation started about how best to send the messages we want to send with our numbers. Good luck, everybody.